This is my C200. It's rigged out for handheld shooting right now, but in just a few minutes, and with the help of no tools whatsoever, I can go from this to this. Let me show you how I did. In this video, I'll be going over my entire rig in detail and showing you all the parts I used and why I used them and a lot of the problems I encountered along the way. So recently I got a Canon C200. Now, if you didn't know, the Canon C200's price has recently dropped all the way down to $3,500. Uh, and I got one used off eBay for $2,500. So I thought it was a pretty good deal for the functionality the camera has, internal NDs. Uh, I mean, this camera is still pretty solid in 2023 if you can get it for that price. Now, why did I switch from the Pocket 6K to the C200 in the first place? Long story short, the Pocket 6K started to kind of glitch up on me, uh, started to act a little bit less reliably, so I didn't feel comfortable using the Pocket 6K as my main camera on wedding days. Using it as my main camera, it just didn't feel safe anymore because it started to have a few problems. Because of that, I decided to go and get a different camera. Um, that was at the beginning of wedding season and I had a lot of pressure to make sure I could um, do all the weddings I had booked really well. Um, so I went and bought a C200 and built it out into the rig that I'm about to show you. So that's the backstory. Now let's get to the rig. So uh, for starters, this is how I use the Canon C200 handheld. Now everything is pretty standard and it's pretty like stock, I guess you would say. The only difference is that when I bought this camera off eBay, it didn't come with the microphone mount that the C200 originally came with. So I built my own out of this NATO rail and some quarter 20 D-ring screws. I've paired this with the stock shotgun microphone mount that came with my Sennheiser MKE 600, which is the shotgun mic I'm using. And so far this mount has worked really well and I really like how the, the D-ring screws don't come out when you take the mount off the camera. Now, when I'm going handheld, I use the Canon BPA60 batteries. I have one of these right now, and I, I bought one by Power Extra, and I absolutely love it so far. I know that these batteries are supposed to last about four hours of constant recording, and in wedding day time of off and on recording, that usually lasts me about five or six hours. Uh, so I've been super, super happy with this power solution so far. The only other thing to really mention about the handheld rig is that I use this Manfrotto plate on the bottom, uh, which is massive, it's super long, and it's compatible with the DJI RS2. Apparently you can't just use any Manfrotto plate with the RS2 because of the gears uh, that the adjustment knob uses on that base plate. So this one has worked really well, it's really solid, and I screw it onto the camera with a quarter 20 as well as a 3 8 screw. All right, so that's super basic information, uh, but now let's get to the gimbal rig. Okay, so this is how I currently keep my C200 rigged out on the RS2. One of my main goals when building out this rig was to make sure it wasn't heavier than my Pocket 6K RS2 rig. And I'm happy to say that I have accomplished that goal. And the main reason for that is that I'm not using a V-mount to power the C200 on the RS2 like I was with the Pocket 6K. That V-mount is really heavy and it makes a big difference. It powers the camera for like a whole day, but it is pretty heavy. Okay, so let's start at the top of the gimbal and work our way down and I'll show you the parts I use. So first off, I'm using the stock C200 monitor on top of the camera without the top handle. Uh, so it's basically a stripped down version of the handheld camera. I found this monitor being mounted on top works really well and I prefer using it this way over mounting a monitor down on the RS2. Why not just mount the stock monitor on top of the camera, balance the whole thing on the gimbal instead of mounting it down here off this NATO rail like that. It actually works fine to mount this whole part of it up here like that. Uh, it all balances. I found that when I mount a monitor down there off of the NATO clamp that's on the RS2, um, I'm holding the gimbal in a position that's that's really level with my eyes, but and I'm holding it close to me, but then I'm looking down like this. And so I'm carrying the gimbal and I'm just like trying to do this number right here. Uh, one thing to note here is that in order to mount the stock monitor to the top of the camera, uh, without the top handle, you have to put a spacer uh, on the thumb screw so that the, th the thumb screw doesn't bottom out when you're screwing it onto the top of the camera. 
I don't know why the threads aren't deeper on the C200 and I don't know why they made that thumb screw so long, uh, but I just added a spacer and it works fine. And next I have that same mount I already mentioned uh, for the microphone. And the only difference here is that I take it off of the handheld rig and I flip it upside down. I take the quarter 20 screw out and I put it in the other side and I mount it with the mic facing up. And the only reason for this is that if I sling the mic underneath the NATO rail like I do in the handheld rig, it bumps into the RS2. I have the MKE 600 uh, run into the camera via the 3.5 millimeter mic terminal. Um, and the only reason I did this is first off, the, the MKE 600 came with a really nice XLR to 3.5 millimeter adapter. Um, and I just feel like running XLR on this gimbal rig would make it a lot more cumbersome and uh, it would just stick off the back of the camera a lot more and, and make everything more cumbersome and heavy. So I'm trying to keep things lightweight and minimal. Moving down to the lens, I usually like to use the Sigma 24 to 70 and I find that it works really well for weddings, especially ceremonies. It's really nice being on the gimbal and having the ability to zoom all the way into 70 millimeters on a Super 35 sensor. Um, that's a lot of reach. It's not too much reach, but it's a lot of reach. Uh, and I found that it works really well and I really enjoy it. During wedding receptions, I usually switch to the Sigma 18 to 35. And I really like that because of the lower aperture and it just seems a little bit sharper than the 24 to 70. Um, and it's not full frame and it's really designed for like a Super 35. Uh, so it makes a really good combination handheld during a reception. I, I really enjoy using it. Speaking of lenses, let's move on to the focus system, which is a pretty crucial system on this rig uh, since the C200's autofocus isn't phenomenal. It might be doable, but I just really prefer to have manual focus on a rig like this. I feel like it gives me a lot more control. Instead of mounting the focus motor to the end of the Manfrotto plate like DJI suggests, I ended up actually drilling out DJI's rod holder for the focus motor uh, because heads up this is like a 12 millimeter rod and most of them are like 15 millimeters I believe uh, so this is smaller than the standard rod size so I needed to use DJI's rod holder uh, but I drilled it out and I mounted it to my base plate counterweight adapter instead of mounting it to the front of the Manfrotto plate that the camera is actually on. Now, the reason I did that is because if I mount this motor directly to the camera, then when I take this camera off the gimbal, the focus motor is attached. And now I have to like unscrew it and everything to use the camera handheld. And I didn't want to do that. This is really nice because when I mount it to this base plate counterweight adapter, it easily clamps onto the end of a Manfrotto plate, um, but I can easily take it off. And it's kind of like a modular focus system. And the other nice thing about this is that not only can I take it off and on of my gimbal rig, I can also take this and put it on my wife's R7 RSC2 rig, uh, which I haven't mentioned, um, but I can put it on hers just as easily, hook her up, and now she can run a manual focus if she wants to. Um, so I think doing your focus system like this regardless is just a really great idea and there's less screwing and unscrewing involved. And since the system is so rigid, uh, I feel like the the C200 is just way more solid than the Pocket 6K. Um, it's so rigid that there doesn't seem to be any flex between the lens and the focus motor. So I haven't even seen the need to add a lens support yet or a strap. Um, I, it's very easy to if I need to, but I really haven't seen a need to do that yet. Um, so if you feel like you need to, definitely add one of those. As far as powering the camera, I use the BPA30 batteries, which are the smaller ones. And the reason I do this is because the bigger ones interfere with the rear motor of the gimbal. Plus the BPA 30s are lighter and I wanted to keep this gimbal as light as reasonably possible. I know it doesn't look like that. I mean, I'm mounting a C200 on a gimbal, so take it for what it's worth, but I wanted to keep it as light as I could uh, for what it is. Um, these smaller batteries still have really good battery life and I can usually get like two or three hours of wedding day coverage out of them. And before we move further down on the gimbal, the only other thing I have mounted to the camera itself is a small counterweight. It's a 60 gram counterweight by Tilta and I mount this on the bottom of the Manfrotto plate. Moving further down the gimbal, you've probably already noticed that I moved the camera's pistol grip to the RS2. 
Now, the reason I did this is because I wanted to have a camera control at my fingertips. I wanted to be able to press record, adjust my aperture, use that joystick and the customizable button. That's a lot of control to have at my fingertips. Now, ideally, you would just run a camera control cable from the C200 to the RS2, but it turns out the C200 isn't compatible with the RS2, and I even tried using a USB mini to USB-C cable that's from DJI for camera control. I tried using it, it did not work. Um, so just a heads up for anyone out there who thinks that they can do that, I thought I could do that. It didn't work. Uh, camera control is not compatible between the C200 and the RS2. Honestly, that's probably one of the biggest downsides of this system is that you can't use camera control. Having that record button on the gimbal is really nice. It's something I really liked with the Pocket 6K. So since I couldn't run camera control, I had to figure out a way to mount that pistol grip on the RS2. And that was a little bit of a journey in and of itself, but I ended up mounting it using a NATO rail to rosette adapter. Um, and it mounts it in a really good position on the RS2 uh, because when I'm holding the gimbal in that position, my right hand is still taking some of the weight of the gimbal. I tried another method where I mounted the pistol grip on an arm by, by Tilta that's further down and further off the gimbal. And I tried holding it down there and I didn't like it as much because my hand was down there like to hit record and everything, but it wasn't carrying any of the weight of the gimbal because if I, if I bore weight with that hand, it just, the whole gimbal tried to go that way. Uh, but the weight just wasn't distributed through both hands as well. So mounting it up there really close to that handle works really well. So I kind of like to hold it like this. Um, when I'm doing a lot of stop and start recording, I can also adjust my aperture right here. This dial, it's very easy to do that. This strap gets in the way a little bit, but it's not too bad. Um, record is the biggest thing. I can just hit record right there. Um, I don't have a card in it, that's why it's not recording. Um, but the main functionality I love on this handle is right back here. I've got the joystick, which I can adjust my little focus boxes up there. Canon's little focus boxes that show you if you're in focus while you're manually focusing. Or the autofocus box, that's fine too. Um, so that joystick back there is really awesome for that. And for navigating the menus, that's another really good reason I like it because I need to change something. I can prop it on this hip right here. I can reach up here, hit the menu button on the screen or back here. And then um, I can just put my hand back down here. I can navigate around, do whatever I need to do, and then uh, and then punch out of there and I'm, I'm good to go. So anyways, that's, that's really nice. There's so much functionality in this handle and I'm really happy I have it down there. The other problem I ran into mounting the pistol grip down there was running the cable from the pistol grip to the C200. It turns out you can't just use a typical TRS or TRRS cable to go from the pistol grip to the camera. I tried every cable combination possible and none of them worked really well. Like a lot of times I could get it to record, uh, but everything else would mess up. And then the scary thing is it would lock up all the buttons on my camera so that I couldn't press any of them while that cable was plugged in. So it jeopardized the rest of my camera's functionality, which I did not like. So the only safe way uh, to mount the pistol grip uh, and relocate it is to use the shape relocation cable uh, and it costs $87 off BH photo uh, so it's it's pricey but it does work really well I really wish there were more cable options out there for relocating this grip because one thing I don't like about the shape cable is that it's coiled and it's really beefy and it's kind of hard to make it really flexible between the C200 and the gimbal the cable kind of interferes so what I ended up doing was strapping the excess of the cable to the, the little base plate area of the RS2 and I just tuck it up under there and I leave enough loose so that it can kind of flex and move around when I'm, when I'm moving the gimbal. And it's worked okay, but it has put a little bit of strain on the gimbal's motors. So this is probably my biggest gripe with the rig right now, uh, but it's not a big issue. It still works fine. But if anybody knows of a cheaper cable that could be used to relocate the camera's grip, post it in the comments and help everybody out. I would greatly appreciate that. So at the end of the day, um, mounting the pistol grip in a different location was a little bit of a hassle. It was a bit of a rough journey. Um, but at the end of the day, it's really nice to have all that functionality in your hand, just like you would when you're handheld. 
Now, one more quick limitation to be aware of is that the EVF on the C200, if you're using the standard C200 and not the C200B, uh, is the EVF does get in the way of that rear focus motor if you tilt your gimbal too far forward. However, this hasn't been a problem for me. I mean, I, I rarely tilt my gimbal that far forward where it interferes. Uh, it hasn't been an issue for me, and if it was, I would do a C200B conversion and look into that. So for anyone out there who's worried about this, I don't think it's a big issue, uh, for my needs at least, because I'm not tilting the gimbal down. So just think about that if you're always tilting your gimbal into like flashlight mode. But honestly, this is not a big limitation, especially for mounting this big of a camera on the RS2. So there you have it. The C200 is super functional handheld. Like I love using the C200 handheld, um, but having the ability to put it on the gimbal in just a few minutes with no tools and have a gimbal rig that's relatively lightweight is a game changer in my opinion. Uh, I'm carrying it around, I'm filming, obviously, but you don't wanna stay like this all the time. So all I gotta do is, you know, is hit my, double tap my power button, lock all my axes, and then I can carry it from the arm like that. I can stand here like this all day. I mean, this is really not too hard to carry it by my side, or obviously pop the legs out, set it down, take a break, shake your hands, get a little bit of blood circulation going back in them. It, uh, it takes a little bit of muzzle to carry this thing, but it works out. It's, uh, I enjoy it, it's a lot of fun. We stop texting me. I love how the camera has internal NDs, which allows me to use a lens hood on my lenses, uh, which is really nice. It's something I wasn't able to do on the Pocket 6K. And honestly, I got really tired of screwing and unscrewing ND filters. I also love how the camera shoots uh, internal cinema raw light. Um, the codecs aren't as easy to work with as the Blackmagic raw codecs. They're, they are massive, they're pretty big, and they don't handle as well in DaVinci as Blackmagic RAW, but the colors are really good and the dynamic range of the camera is really good. So I really enjoy shooting with the camera and I've really enjoyed color grading the footage. I think it has some really beautiful results. I also love how you can get this camera for just $3,500 new right now. I think that's a pretty good deal. I got mine used on eBay for $2,500 and it only had 20 hours on it. So for those of you who wanna get the underrated camera, um, I think this is a great option. Anyways, I hope you found this video helpful and useful. And if you did, feel free to give it a like so that it can be useful to more people. And if you have any questions about the C200 or this rig, let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching and have a blessed day.